expect members of our armed forces to show bravery when facing the enemy. But what about bravery off the battlefield? Well, here's the inspiring story of a soldier who faced her biggest challenge when she finally acknowledged her true identity. Captain Hannah Winterbourne always wanted to be a soldier. She served all over the world, including in Afghanistan, with the Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers. But when she joined the army, Captain Winterbourne was a man. Ever since I was young, I knew there was something not quite right. I didn't feel comfortable in my own skin to, it, to a complete degree. But at the same time, it wasn't really until um, sort of university time, when I was around sort of 18, I was really starting to get uneasy about living a male life and starting to think about maybe living a female life instead. Captain Winterbourne is transgender. She was born physically male, but felt female. I think the biggest misconception about being transgender is that it's some form of being gay, um, when actually it's far more about your identity as you feel inside rather than your sexual preference. Uh, for example, uh, you can be transgender and straight, but you can also be transgender and gay. In 2009, she joined Sandhurst Military Academy and began training to be an army officer. I was put into a very masculine environment during my time at Sandhurst. I essentially suppressed lots of my sort of feminine traits. For me, having to put away my true identity and pretend to be someone else uh, was difficult. Keep it going, Dave. Keep it going. As a junior officer in command of a unit of soldiers, Captain Winterbourne continued to keep her femininity a secret. The only way that I could carry on living a life as a male was to have very private time behind a locked door, starting to experiment, you know, maybe you know, through, through cross-dressing or talking to people online. You know, I was almost leading a double life. But that double life couldn't continue when she was posted to Afghanistan in 2011. That private life that I managed to fashion for myself um, back in barracks, and that went when I was in Afghanistan. And living in a room with six men um, meant that there was no downtime for me, and it was constant. And that just really pushed me to that sort of tipping point. And then eventually, it gets to the point where it's make or break time. And it was a case of carry on this lie, and I'm going to end up in a mess in the future. or time to do something about it, time to break free from those, those shackles, if you like, and, uh, and become the person I was supposed to be. Captain Winterbourne decided to become a woman, but before she could begin the physical transformation, she had to tell the army. Walking into that office, knowing that I was about to tell my commanding officer that I was transgender, it was so nerve-wracking. Um, I saw him as a representative of an army, which I thought was going to be very anti what I was about to say but I couldn't have been more wrong. Senior army officers briefed the battalion on Captain Winterbourne's change of gender. We did it uh, in an informal manner, so everybody had a chance to air their questions, and if there was any concerns, to, uh, to bring those out. And it was as simple as, this is going to happen. On Friday, um, Captain Winterbourne will be sir. On Monday, Captain Winterbourne will be ma'am. And we did it in a very matter-of-fact way, and it all went very smoothly. Hello, ma'am. Hey, sorry, Kelly. All the soldiers were briefed quite clearly uh, exactly how to react and, and what, what they're supposed to, how they're supposed to act. So some of them may have found it difficult to start with, given one or two days that they got used to the idea. The soldiers that I've commanded have been brilliant. Um, they're a bit surprised, a bit shocked at first. And yeah, they made mistakes at first. They used to call me Sir and he still, but it, was, it wasn't out of any malice. And, you know, a week later, it was pretty much the normal and everyone was just getting on with their jobs. I think. People view the army as quite a, a macho, male-driven organisation, and for her to make that decision in this organisation, I think is really, really brave. Today, Captain Winterbourne is the army's highest-ranking transgender officer. Taking on the role as a transgender representative for the British Army, and I get the chance to stand up there and say, look, I'm an army officer and I'm transgender. Whatever you want to do in your life, um, you can achieve it, regardless of being transgender. This is me, this is the way I was born, and this is the way I was meant to be. All that it took was for me to understand that about myself and have the courage to do something about it. Brilliant, that wasn't it? Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. Fantastic. Great film. Yeah.
And Captain Hannah Winterborn is with us now. I'm so brave to follow your dreams and so brave to let us make that film as well and to come on the sofa. Thank so you. Thank you, Hannah. Um, you said in the film that um, it was quite hard to have your private time and explore how you yeah. felt, especially when you went to Afghanistan. Why then did you go into the army in the first place, knowing that you had these feelings? Wouldn't it have made, well, it did, it did make it more difficult for you, didn't it? Well, I wouldn't say it made it more difficult for me. I mean, I joined the army because I wanted to do things, yeah. the sort of things the army were doing. So the, the job opportunity there was still good. So I'm an engineer in the, in the army and I like doing that mm. job. And that's and the job you wanted to do full stop. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. So the fact that I was trans didn't actually come into it, which is a good thing. And you said in the film that um, the transition was quite easy, that on the Friday you were a man, on the, on the Monday you were a woman. Was there anything at all, though? Because it's quite hard to believe that everybody just took to it so easily and, you know, there was, I mean, there was, there was no, no there, negativity. There was absolutely nothing malicious, and that's, that's not a lie, that's completely true. I mean, you do get a couple of people going, you know, um, good morning, sir. I mean, mum, yeah. and that's just normal because it's a transition for them as it is as it is for me. It's just a, it's just kind of getting used to it. But in terms of any sort of malicious bullying or harassment, it just didn't exist. What about yeah. humour? Because often humour is a good <laughs> yeah. way of getting yeah, over this. Just... There must have been some funny moments. Definitely. I mean, I more from my point of view, I, I tend to use jokes if I can to sort of put people at ease. So when people do get it wrong on the phone or something like that, we're like, you know, don't worry about it. It's all cool. Make some sort of joke and. Now I'm under pressure to make a joke now, it's, I can't say it's uh, No, it's fine. <laughs> you don't have to do that. We can't do it and we do it every week, so exactly. don't worry about that. Um, who was it harder to, to confide in, your colleagues or your family? It's got to be family, So, because mm. you feel like you owe your family something. You know, my parents particularly, you know, they brought me up and, you know, I love them to bits and they support me fully. Um, but telling your parents that um, you're transgender is never going to be easy because no one ever, ever wants to hear it. And now, you know, a couple of years down the line, you look back on it and go, well, actually, we're, we're happy when parents say that they're proud of me now, and that's fine. But, mm. yeah, trying to tell your parents that you're not the son that they thought they had is difficult. Mm. OK. Hannah, thank you so much. It was a, it's a wonderful film, and thanks thank for coming you. on to the show. It's been a pleasure. Us, well, I think, haven't you you've fit, fit into your dress now? Because it's, you, you might not after the show, because it's Cake Friday. <laughs> it's a Cake Friday. Because it's Jamie's 40th birthday soon. So, as a, <laughs> as a symbol... Oh. As a symbol, you see, a symbol of our love for you. I love it. Yeah, yeah. we have your little 40th birthday cake Thank here. you, fruit. Oh, that's an, that's an early... What do you think? And that's a food revolution, you that's, see. That's thanks for... Th yeah. <laughs> it's carrot and beans. 40 pizza. years old. I think it's next week is my birthday, I think. No, I think it's 12 days. You're so busy, okay, you don't sorry. even know when your birthday is. <laughs> it's the 27th. Yeah. OK, what are you going to do 40th birthday? Um... Just have a quiet one with the family, and then probably a month later have a bit of a, a, a rave up with, you know, friends. But it's a busy month, so, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to delay it by a month. OK, well, I think the one show is on that night, so you can still watch the one yes. show on your yeah, fortune. Yeah, you can have your routine. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? Yes. And we could come afterwards if there is a party. Yeah, you can come. OK. Now, we have got a knife here, so we can slice it all up. That's all good. Thank You're pretty good with a knife, aren't you, Jim? Um, yeah, I can do. Uh, thanks for coming in this evening. Yeah. You're welcome. Uh, thanks, Hannah. Thanks to the fruit! Yeah. And the students! This part of the audience too, we don't know who you are, but anyway. <laughs> have a lovely weekend. Um, we're going to leave, uh, leave tonight, have a great weekend yourselves, with Jamie's brand new music video. It's called Revolution, once again starring whom? Uh, God, we've got um, Ed Sheeran, Paul McCartney, Jazzy B, George the Poet, Professor Green, Alicia Dixon. We've got Jamie Callum. Uh, I'm going to forget some, so I'm going to get in trouble. All right, well, don't worry. We can play Spot the yeah. Star now. Now, this um, <laughs> video has been online for 24 hours. Yeah. Uh, when we came on the air, it received about 11 million hits. Now, 24 and a half million hits. How many more after this? Great weekend. Thank you very much, See indeed, everybody. Here we go. Bye.